art colleagues. Uh, I'm Barb Mertz. I teach middle school art in a Nebraska middle school. Uh, I've been teaching art for 27 years and a lot has changed, but over the past you know, years, I've come up with some um, strategies and um, tools to help your classroom be more creative and feel more comfortable for the kids and you. And um, some of these things I have I've thought of some of the stuff I've, I've got from other people, but I've compiled it into a top 10 list of middle school art teacher secrets. So your room setup is super important and um, having individual supply areas because in middle school, those of you who have been in, lived in middle school for any time know that those kids love to get together and just congregate. Okay, so that is um, tip number 10. Okay, so here is a shot of my art room. And I gotta tell you, I have a really nice art room, I think. I've been very blessed. And um, one of the things about my art room is I have divided it up into sections. So on the ceiling, you can see that I have numbers on the ceiling numbers on the ceiling, amongst other things. And these are my table groups, okay? So then within these countries, I also have table labels, which I will explain later. But each table group has, oh look, it's a ghost. Each table has its own supply area. So like this is the supply area for this group, and each uh, drawer has its own supplies. So like magazines and stuff like that and then I've got colored pencils that are readily available and sharpeners so we're not always going to the pencil sharpener and I feel like by having these table groups uh, the kids are less likely to uh, collect together as middle schoolers love to do. They also have their own sinks and uh, this table group actually has two sinks and so anyway and aprons so they are like self-sustaining territories in my art room and um, I try to build some team cohesiveness with it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but anyway and then of course readily available trash can and then the kids have a folder that um, they have in art that they keep here and they have this tote tray and then you have the problem well who's gonna get the tote tray out and who puts it away because you know middle school and so anyway the first person always gets it out when they come in and then there is a person who sits in these chairs so this is obviously group one's chair and uh, then they're responsible for putting it away at the end of the hour and then of course what middle schooler doesn't want to leave early so if they put it away and they're in the chair, then they get to leave first. I also he have each hour organized. So here's where their tote trays are stored. And then I've got more tote trays in other areas, but it's all pretty labeled so everybody can see it. Number nine, manage mats and ability grouping in art. And guess what? I don't use reading assessments to do this. Um, ability grouping and um, assessment so you can a real ability group. So my ability grouping, I start out my very first day with the kids with a super quick rules and expectations thing. It's like two minutes long and it's on video because I can't say the same thing twice. And so anyway, then what they do is like you see, like you see right here, they make like these little drawings that are just silly little drawings and they have directions and then from there I ability group them so when I ability group uh, what I try to do is I put a really high kid a medium high kid uh, a low kid and a really visually challenged kid together at a table and that way um, you know I've got like a an expert at the table so they can kind of help the other kids and help bring them up. Um, it, it typically works pretty good. I've tried this all different ways and um, it seems like this way works pretty good for me and 
keeps questions for me at a minimum because they know they have an expert at their table. You can see here, this is their management and uh, this is how I ability group them at their tables. And you might be asking, how'd you get that painted on there? Well, what I did is I devised a stencil and you can see I've used this quite a bit and I spray paint it on. Now, this is the first year I've done this and I've tried it all sorts of different ways. Um, mats, they just, I mean, our tables get washed so often by the kids because they do such a good job cleaning up. But anyway, um, the spray paint that, um, it's just standard spray paint, whatever, that you can get at Walmart. And um, I have not had to redo these till like the last month of school and they've faded a little bit, but it's worked pretty good. And they can wipe and wipe and they just stay put. So anyway, uh, that has their pertinent information on it and they each, they each get a number. Um, our school did Kagan, so this is actually a Kagan mat if that's what, you know, if you want to look up like specifics and stuff. But anyway, this is my version of it. Tip number eight would be my use of the chore chart. So this thing is laminated and the thing I like about it is it's Velcro. So these chores change every week. So every week they just rotate. And then you can see here the table numbers that at the, are at the tables line up with who has whatever job. And actually I found the kids kind of like it. Um, they like knowing and um, having the security of you know who's in charge of what. So anyway, that's my chore chart. Tip number seven the use of bell ringers at the beginning of the hour. Bell ringer, so I have my bell ringer on my screen like you can see, um, and um, it just tells them what they are supposed to be accomplishing during the day, and then I have these quotes that they write down, and then they are supposed to talk to each other about them. Um, I also have a bell ringer too for my older kids where they like, draw stuff on their folder, it's just easy stuff, um, just to give me a few minutes to get attendance put in and catch my breath and make sure I'm ready for them as well. So that is tip number four, my bell ringer activity. Tip number six, my use of the ding dong doorbell as an attention getter. Put it on my badge that I keep on my uh, belt buckle. Anyway. Um, this is a, a wireless doorbell and I'll ring it. Here we go. So <laughs> pretty clever, isn't it? I love it. And it's got like 30 some ringtones. I just bought it on Amazon for like 13 bucks. Tip number five, that would be my cell phone policy. Never did I think phones in a classroom would be a big deal, but they are. So I have my policy listed, and you can see I have been painting. <laughs> and so anyway, um, cell phones, oh my gosh, they steal your creativity when you are a middle schooler. And um, so I don't let the kids, I strongly encourage them not to even have them on their body. They all have computers with a bag that the district gives them, and so I just have them tell them to put them in their bag um, so they can work buzz free. Okay, tip number four is an alarm that I have on my phone for every class and um, that way I know when it's time to go and the kids know when it's time to go. I set it for four minutes ahead of the school bell so that we have plenty of time to clean up and I'm horrible at time management, so this has helped me so much. And I have probably, I would say about 10, 15 alarms set on my phone. And so the kids know when they hear the certain alarm that goes off, they know. Um, and that helps them to keep working until it's time to go as well. what to do with the kids when they are done with their studio piece and I call this my enrichment activity grade and on the board I have just a menu of things that they can choose from um, and um, it, it seems to help them stay focused stay engaged after they're done with their studio piece 
um, its coloring sheets, some um, videos that I've made on my YouTube channel on how to draw, and some art history videos on their classroom site along with a little quiz after each video and there's eight activities total. I teach a six week class so it goes really fast um, but this helps keep them engaged in a worthwhile graded activity after they're done with their painting or drawing or whatever. So I, I've always had some type of activity but um, I kind of like this setup because now that they have computers it works pretty good. All right, we're getting close to the number one. Number two on my middle school art teacher uh, secrets. Um, the first one is glue sponges. So glue sponges, for those of you who don't know, this is just a sponge with water and Elmer's glue. And um, I have some containers that they go in um, because Elmer's glue in a bottle is like a nightmare because kids do all sorts of crazy stuff to punk them up and these are great. I add glue to them all the time so they're super sticky. Then for paint, I use paper palettes. And so I just have a bunch of paper plates that I pour the paint on for kids so they don't get to pour their own paint because I swear they think they're painting a house. So as well as using paper plates for my paint um, and then they're disposable and they kind of hold the paint better, I also never have the kids wash their own brush. I always have them bring it up with their painting. They have two hands, each hand needs something. So what they do is they just have their brushes and put them in a tub to soak and that just makes way less playtime at the sink. And my last part of number two is my table paper. And I used to use newspaper, but then Hal came along or STEM and I don't have any newspaper now. So I have a bunch of construction paper that I absolutely hate using. And so I just use construction paper for table paper. And you can see we use them over and over again. Um, when they do clay on these, I throw them away after we do clay, but for paint, you can just keep going and then I just have them get their table paper from the bottom so they're dry, but um, this has been wonderful. Okay, we've made it to number one on the middle school art teacher secrets list, and that would be greeting the students as they come to my room. So I always greet them, or at least I try really hard to greet them. And then that's a good way for me to gauge, you know, how they're doing, how their day's going, if they're gonna need some extra special love in my class. Um, and then also I'm checking them for phones and just reminding them of phones. And uh, it has been a habit that I have had to just really get into, but it makes a huge difference for them to start your class knowing that you care, you're here, and you love them. So these have been my top 10 middle school art teacher secrets that will help your classroom be productive and creative. And uh, hey, there's nothing better than being an art teacher. I love my job. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe.